Hello everyone, welcome back to Arxangel RC. That time has finally come to review something a bit more recent and the plane in question is the Atom RC Killer Whale. Before we get started though, I would like to dive into that name a little bit. I understand the desire to continue the aquatic name theme with these, but this, at least to me, does in no way resemble a killer whale. Maybe, just maybe, there might be something with the full canopy on there, but it's way too little to justify the name. I sat there and looked at it, and was wondering what it reminds me of, and then it hit me. The Mandalorian spaceship, the Razor Crest. You can't deny that the resemblance is definitely there, and what I've seen from the plane, especially in manual mode, I'd say it even performs a good deal like it too. Believe it or not, the same person was involved in the design of the Aggressor, also known as the regular duck, and this one. And for some reason, I feel the need to rename this one too. So from now on, on this channel, it shall be known as the Razor Crest. This is the way. Hate away haters, if you dare. So, let's get back to the review. The plane came well packed with a decent amount of bubble wrap and had a good deal of work done on the assembly too, but here is one of the weird things. You know how I often bitch about the shoddy glue job on various plywood pieces on pre-assembled kits and how it is a good idea to redo the gluing yourselves and how manufacturers better leave those unglued so we can do them properly? Well, seems like Atom RC have been listening because a few key pieces of plywood were not glued in, which I definitely appreciate, but then other, more important pieces were glued in. So, pick a lane. Either glue in all of them or none. I did try to pry those motor mounts out with no luck, so it would seem they have done a good job of it. But in any case, flying the plane will reveal for sure if that is true or not. Overall, the plane came together quickly and easily. The vertical fins on the tail are a bit fiddly, because it is not exactly clear how they're supposed to sit relative to the horizontal surface, and for me at least, each one ended up in a different position, so I would urge Atom RC to redesign this bit, just in case they are thinking of updating this plane. I am going to fly it like this for the time being, but am considering adding some reinforcements there to tighten up the tail, so there will be an update on that later on. Another point of interest for me was the lack of a rear spar, which is supposed to support the wings at the back and prevent them from twisting around, or at least I thought there should be such a thing, until I got to thinking that there is no way to actually secure the wings to the fuselage, and while pondering over the brave decision on the part of the manufacturer to rely purely on main spar and connect the friction for the wings to stay in, and also admiring the amount of spare large plastic bolts they have provided for the tail, it suddenly dawned on me that some of those boats probably go there and are used to secure the wings and in fact when I check the openings inside the wings you can see a threaded bit buried in plywood blocks so it all made sense in the end but even a single reference to that in the user manual would have made the situation a whole lot easier and quicker to figure out so here is advice number two add a second page to that manual. Won't be useless and won't bankrupt you. Other than that, I really hated the fact that plastic gear servos were provided with a plane claiming to have a maximum takeoff weight of 2.5 kilograms. This is literally an accident waiting to happen, so I did the logical thing and replaced them with these Emacs metal geared ones, or at least the outer part is, I hope the insides are as well. At least they were the exact same shape and size and didn't require any modifications to the plane in order to fit them in there. Sorting out the ESC and motor wiring in the plane did require some soldering, so perhaps this is not a job for the complete beginners out there, especially those that haven't held a soldering iron before. I appreciate those wing connectors though, and the fact that most of the work was already done. These feel solid, the mounting points are quite accurate, and even though they are hard to push in and get out, at least the connection is secure. Besides, the plane miraculously fits assembled in my car, so this puppy is not going to get pulled apart for a long while. 
On the bottom side there are indications of a possible future landing gear kit but none is provided with the plane and in any case most of the locations I fly at are not very suitable for that. Absolutely love the camera provisions in the nose, especially the one for the FPV camera and I did get the FPV set which included a rather nice but super small Foxier Toothless 2 camera which is about the only size that would fit on there once you install the mounts so unless you want to be modding and cutting foam make sure you have one of those super small cameras for an easy fit. The HD camera bay is designed to fit a wide variety of GoPro cameras mostly so it did take a bit of modding to get the DJI Osmo action in there but it worked out well in the end using some of the additionally provided covers. Only drawback of this design and no additional strap for the camera is that when you land the camera tends to vacate the premises in a hurry which is definitely not a long term solution but it will do for now. At least it doesn't happen on every landing and there is no actual damage to the plane. Another interesting piece that comes with this plane is the power distribution board meant for the wings as the wing connectors come with the right connections to plug straight into it which if you are using a receiver only should make things quite convenient for you and would simplify the wiring a great deal. However, its existence in the age of autopilots has questionable merits. I hardly see anybody flying this plane without an autopilot and recently I've hardly seen anybody using anything other than a Matic wing controller or some other type of integrated solution which includes a power module for the ESCs and power for the servos in it as well. That being said means that this power distribution board is sort of obsolete from the get go if not for one thing. The connectors coming from the wings to it are pre-installed. I want to use the Matic H743 wing board in this build due to a lack of anything else available in my workshop so if I want to forego the power distribution board I will have to cut the connectors off and crimp on new ones to match the H743 wing which I was most definitely way too lazy to do. Plus I was curious to see how this PDB was going to perform especially over a longer period of time so I made my system to use the PDB and the H743 wing making it more complicated and adding more failure points and creating more soldering work for me but the test is more important and the fact that I didn't have to crimp new connectors to those cables really made me happy. The flight controller deck had plenty of room for both boards but keep in mind it comes pre-installed and it wasn't perfectly level so it may be a good idea to level the autopilot again after installation just in case. After sorting that I test powered the wings to see if all is working and since nothing went up in flames and the motors were spinning normally and I could verify their direction I then moved on to do the rest of the system adding the MyFly Dream Antenna Tracker module with its own GPS unit installing the provided 1500 milliwatt video transmitter at the back with the antenna pointing out to the side and also installed a 900 megahertz dragon link receiver but I'm not going to wire in the telemetry just yet didn't feel like doing it at this moment. With that the whole autopilot and FPV system for the Razor Crest had been completed and was ready for flight. I did flash the H743 wing with RG plane and did the setup procedure before going to the flying field including setting up auto takeoff and a mission for those endurance runners and as usual no compass for best results. Since the manual boldly stated a 2.5 kilogram maximum takeoff weight I decided to use my 4S3P 18650 lithium iron battery pack the same one I use on the duck and with it the plane weights in at 1.77 kilograms but that includes the autopilot FPV system and the DJI Osmo action camera which itself is pretty heavy as well. Plus that battery is around 600 grams on its own so without it the plane sits at 1.14 kilograms. I did balance it at the CG points on the wings hoping that those are accurate. At first the ESCs were acting up and cutting off at full throttle or at least one of them was but then I remembered I haven't done an ESC calibration and once I did it all was good. I did check and recheck all of the control surface movements, stabilization directions etc a few times to make sure all is working as it should be. 
For the maiden takeoff, I decided not to use the auto takeoff I set up, but I did put the plane in 5 by wire A mode, throttled up and threw it. And luckily there were no bad surprises, it just flew off, stable as it could be. I flew around for a while and it was decent, I did some trimming, made sure it is not going to crash if I let go of the sticks etc. And then rather than doing my usual stall tests, I was curious to see how far I'd be able to get with the linear antenna on the plane and the triple feed patch array on the tracker. So headed out and I made it to about 6 kilometers, and then while turning around ended up behind a pretty sizable bush and some trees so the video signal kinda went away. So I put the plane in return to land and waited patiently for it to come close enough to regain the video link. Lately it has been very difficult to fly long range from within the city. So much interference everywhere you point those antennas to, it is getting seriously annoying. But anyway, once I regained the video link, I switched out of return to land and started gaining altitude and before I knew it, I'd gotten up quite high. Had a nice view of the sunset, as well as of the clean air above the city, which was less than thrilling. Sadly, I forgot the SD card for the DVR, so the only recording of the OSD data is with my phone filming the monitor. From there, I came down and landed the plane, as it was starting to get dark and the mosquitoes were starting to become quite annoying. Next day I went to the flying field in the morning and this time I did some stall tests and the results were both good and quite boring, if you can believe it. First test was in fly-by-wire A mode and the plane didn't stall at all. No amount of up elevator would even get it to lean to the side. Then I tried manual mode and funny enough I got the same results. Even in manual mode it would not lean or go into a tight turn even. So I decided to try and help it a bit using ailerons and rudder at which point I was able to get it into a spiral but that is quite the unlikely scenario to find yourself into by chance. In addition, as soon as you release the sticks, the plane stops spinning, goes straight and is controllable, so you can fly it as usual, no drama, no surprises at all. Like I said, boring. To be honest, I did play with trying to make it stall quite a bit, and only then engaged the auto mission and let it run through the battery, which it did in 70 minutes, which was impressive since I had spent a good deal of time and energy into gaining altitude for the stall tests. I assume under normal conditions it might reach at least 80 or 90 minutes. At some point I will do some endurance runs to check that and was also thinking to replace those three bladed props with slightly larger two bladed ones as they would be more efficient, hopefully. By the time I recharged the battery, as usual using clean energy generated from the sun, some clouds had formed in the area just outside the city and I didn't let that opportunity go to waste. I oriented the video transmitter antenna so it would be parallel to the ground and sent the plane into the air. I hit the clouds right around the 10th minute which is a pretty good climb rate, although admittedly I did make use of some thermos to speed things up. For the most part it was a bumpy ride up there among the clouds as I often did go through them or close enough for the plane to get knocked around but I think the DJI Osmo action did a good job of smoothing that out enough to be watchable. I have to be honest guys, I enjoyed this flight the most. It was so much fun and so beautiful up there and there was barely any wind so the clouds were very slow moving and I was able to stay in pretty much one general area during this cloud surfing. But guess what? Video signal was pretty good and quite clean with the ground antenna pointed up. Guess there are no interfering signals coming from space, at least not yet. I spent a good 30 to 35 minutes in the actual clouds going up and down left and right. It was awesome and I really did like how the plane handled and really loved the fact that I could make very tight turns aided by those dual rudders and it would not even hint at dipping a wing or throwing me any kind of nasty surprise. It was an awesome experience and I do hope it will not be its last. I'm going to make a separate video of only the best cloud chasing moments from this flight so I wouldn't make this one too long. I also took the chance to fly the plane a bit in manual mode once I'd gotten used to it and trimmed it out and I have to say it is a blast to fly.
It does have a bit of a vector thrusting going with those tractor props and a tail and you can do some seriously tight loops and other crazy stuff, usually unfit for a plane of this type and it does go through them absolutely trouble free and with no hint at tip stalling which is quite comforting. If you split the throttle cables and control each one separately and mix it in with the rudder, making it hover in the air like a 3D plane shouldn't be an issue. Even now, I assume somebody a good deal more skilled than me should be able to make it do so, but honestly, hovering planes is not my strong suit. In any case, I had tons of fun and would definitely keep working on this one to improve a few things and try to make it an even better platform. Not sure how well it will fly at 2.5 kilograms at this wingspan and to be honest I'm not sure I want to try it, at least not with the plug and play motors. And since I didn't enable the flaps, I assume those would be needed at this weight, but still would be too heavy in my opinion. Back in the day the 2 meter wingspan FPV Raptor was considered too heavy at 2.5 kilograms all up weight and it would tip stall on a whim at that weight even at the thought it was going to drop down below 40 kilometers an hour and this plane has a wingspan 70 centimeters shorter. Still might be okay but I'm not sure I want to be testing that. Besides what else can I load it with? It already has everything. At most you may put that tail camera mount on to put a rear facing HD recording camera but that has limited applications and besides the way it is done I have a feeling it will not be good on the elevator as it is quite small even as it is. Putting that thing over it will reduce its efficiency a good deal and may cause some problems especially on takeoff and at lower speeds. So not sure I will be trying that contraption out at all. Now before I end this video I'd like to say a word about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online skill sharing platform offering a wide variety of online courses on a host of topics. For instance there are a number of courses on how to design your very own PCB boards which is a useful skill in today's world. Or perhaps a course or two on how to design for 3D printing and how to 3D print whatever your heart desires which always comes in handy and its applicability goes far beyond the RC hobby. Also you may want to take up knitting to calm your nerves from wrestling with RG plane settings all day long for instance. Another class that I'm finding particularly useful is this fundamentals of DSLR photography one by Justin Bridges. I use my DSLR camera a good deal in my work and as a hobby so learn Learning new things and finding out how to properly master it would definitely be useful. Basically if you are looking to gain a new skill or a few, Skillshare is the place to do it. No ads, no nonsense, just learning in a great community. The first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link will get a 1 month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So have at it. Hopefully soon I will have a follow up video of the Razor Crest dealing with tail reinforcements, tuning, PIDs, endurance and prop tests etc. But until then if you have found this video useful please like, share, subscribe if you haven't already and comment or in any other way engage with this video as it helps it get seen more and helps my channel grow. Using any of the affiliate links in the description below to purchase anything from those websites will help support this channel and my family at no additional cost to you. Another way you can support me is Patreon, the link is also there and I would like to express my eternal gratitude to all the people who have supported me so far in any way and will continue to do so. I wish you all successful flights and I will see you in the next video.